Hey kids! Uh. Hey kids! <laughs> There's gonna be like five people that get that, and those are the people. <laughs> those are the girls. Those that are the girl. girls that grow. For the rest of us, the girls that want. I have a feeling that I edited in where that's from. So that is from the most iconic, most amazing Halloween special of all time, the Garfield Thanks Halloween audience. special. Take that, Binky. Ha-ha! In the first scene, the clown goes, hey, kids! It's the cutest little movie. If you do not watch Love. it during Halloween, would yeah. highly recommend. So, hey there, kiddos. Today, we are here to talk about some bolos with you guys. It's been kind of a hot minute, yeah. I think, since we've since done we've one. Done. The long lingerie intimate. Valentine's Day. I believe mm -hmm. was the last one. Beginning of the month? But... Today we have another kind of more different niche little category for you guys. So lingerie, I feel like was kind of niche. I don't mm -hmm. feel like, obviously not everybody partakes in selling it and not everyone really is like looking for it. But there is a lot of money to be made in those frilly lacy things. And I feel like it's kind of similar with kids stuff. There mm -hmm. definitely, I feel like is a bit more of a crowd that does do the kids sales. Oh yeah. Because mm -hmm. obviously there's an entire platform. I don't know if it exists. Does Kittizen still open? That's I think a good question. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, we really don't, don't know. We don't sell on there. But I know some people sell on Kittizen if it still exists. And Kittizen is a mm -hmm. place for all kinds of kids stuff. So yeah, there's definitely a reselling market for it. And so we are here to talk about kids bola brands for you guys today. It feels very fitting for kind of like the springtime. Spring, new life, a rebirth. Lot of, a lot of baby babies announcements. are always born in spring. Lots of weddings and kind of... Just mm -hmm. a lot of like positive, nice things and rejuvenation and bebes oh, and bebes. So, we're here to talk about Absolutely. bebe clothes, the expensive bebe clothes. So, neither of us, like I just said, are experts in bebe clothes. So, yeah. I did reach out to my friend Melinda to get some help with making this bolo list. We love her. So, I would uh. say at least half of these brands come from Melinda. If you do not know Melinda, she is joyfully curated on mm -hmm. Instagram, she is not very active at the moment. And hasn't yeah. been for a while. She's very offline because she has had a baby she in the past had. year, yes. I think. Unless it's been a little over a year, actually, at this point. I'm not sure. But it's... She recently, within the past 18 months, had a child. Yes. Is what we're trying to say. Yes. <laughs> she helped me come up with this because, obviously, she knows clothes. She knows fashion. Mm -hmm. She has been a reseller in the past as well. And so she helped me come up with some of this list. But some we either did know before or some I just have recently actually yes. learned. But we'll kind of talk about that when we get into them. As per usual, we do have 10 for you guys today. And then tomorrow for the Valentine's, we will have eight more Bolo brands. We love a surprise. Obviously for this list, kind of like the lingerie, don't expect that the retail and resale will be as high as say, if we were talking about Bolo dresses mm -hmm. for adults or, like or something shoes like that. shoes or things like that. Things that can like actually get into the thousands. We didn't even touch that. But like lingerie, if you find this at the bins, it costs you like a quarter. Well, so especially it's like, worth grabbing. Here, are most of the kids' clothes at our Goodwills are like one to five dollars. Like yeah. they're really inexpensive. So even if you're like at Goodwill and you're like, oh, this is cute, and it's a kid's item and it's five bucks, and you're like, why would I pay five dollars for something? Some kids are gonna ride up in two months. Hopefully, one of these brands may shed a little light on the situation. Yes. And then of course, we are not here to talk about like baby Burberry, baby Dior, and stuff like that. That's a given. Mm -hmm. Most luxury brands or bolo brands that like we've talked about in the past probably do yeah. make baby, especially like the designer houses like mm -hmm. Dior does, I'm sure Louis does, Gucci, Gucci does. Has a ton of baby stuff. That's obviously worth picking up and worth a ton of money. So yes, definitely, nice. definitely get that if you see it too. Yes. But these are mainly brands that only make baby clothes. A few of them do make some like mom clothes, mm -hmm. but for the most part, a lot of these are just babies. Yes. And one thing for clarification. So a lot of these brands are like children's. So they go like baby to like whatever the children stops at. So we did all of our research under like the onesie. Yes. For babies category. Just because I think that's a good marker for like how the onesies are priced is going to kind of reflect. For retail resale. Mm -hmm. We're talking onesies. I think it's just easy to compare the exact same thing across the board. Kind of like mm -hmm. how we did just bras for 
lingerie. Lingerie. Yes. And if you see lights coming in, we still need to get a nice we curtain. We need to tear down so these just try to ignore god it. awful metal blinds and put up a nice curtain. And never mind, we just fix the light. I <laughs> we put up a blanket. blinds and I put up a blanket because but, it infuriates but me. But if you ever notice any lines over here or something, it's because of our it's from our horrible blinds. Okay, so we've chit-chatted and bantered on enough right yes, now. Yeah. Let's jump into the actual brands and the actual information. So I'm going to start off as usual and we will flip-flop back and forth. As per usual, we will cover just some background information, some fun facts. Mm -hmm. We'll have pictures going up right here and then we will also cover where these things are sold, what the retail is for a onesie mm -hmm. and what the resale is for a onesie from these brands. And you may notice with these sold at places, a lot of these are sold at very specific children's online designer shops and stores. Very similar to lingerie. We're just going to tell you if there's department stores that they're sold at. Like we're not going to specifically list all these like little kids. like local boutiques. Yeah. My first brand is called Bobo Choses and also oh. When we get into this, ignore if we're saying any names wrong or just slightly off. For the most part, I think we know how to say them all, but there's a few that are a little like French. TBD. So. <laughs> so my first brand is Bobo Choses and Bobo Choses started in 2008, creating imaginary worlds for kids to enjoy is what oh. they said on their website. Oh. This is a brand that has some very, very fun, cute prints. I actually one time did find this brand at the bins, but it was coated and little kid stains all over. So I did pass on it. Dang. So they create pieces for growing kids and their growing young parents. In other words, this is one of those brands that has a few pieces for adults. Their factory, I really like this fact, their factory is actually an old toy factory from way back in the day that shut down. They like purchased it and made it into their own factory. How much fun. And it's two blocks away from the Mediterranean Sea, which is <sighs> also quite cool. All of their kids' clothes are unisex, so they just make them kind of like a little wider so that any kid of any gender can wear them. <laughs> I feel like when you're that age, the gender doesn't matter at all. When yeah. you're a little potato baby, like, you're just a potato baby. Yes. That's it. They also have made a few home things, as in, like, some kids' bedding, or maybe, like, a jumper cover or something like that. And they also have made some picture books, so very fun, like, illustrations mm -hmm. and animations that are from their clothes. This brand is sold at a few of their own actual brick-and-mortar stores in South Korea and Spain. I think mm -hmm. there were, like, four to five actual locations. But then they're also sold at Bergdorf, Goodman, and Saks Fifth, and then a bunch of the designer baby online shops. The retail for a onesie is about $40 to $50, and the resale is about $20 to $40, which again is great That's if really you're thinking bad. at the bins you paid under $1 for it. Okay, so my first one I think is a little bit more common. We probably have heard of this one. It is Janie and Jack. And I, to be completely honest, had this vision of this like lovely New England mother like frolicking through the cranberry fields, be like, these are my babies. We make clothes and it's some like industry giant there's no human being behind it there's no like woman or like story it was invented by like an investment firm in 2002 or like a capitalist group in san francisco they then sold it to the gap in 2021 and gap bought it to like kick out jamboree oh they just bought it yeah like recently, because Jamboree, if you don't know, has been shuttering and closing all of its doors mm. and selling all of its things because, like, they're going broke. So Janie and Jack is kind of just, like, the replenishment for that market for a the Gap. Fresh, the Gap company. Well, because I remember I used to get Jamboree clothes, like, when I was a baby, like, back in the 90s. The moms of today are looking for clothes that don't look anything like they did in yeah. the 90s. They, so the capitalist group was Bain Capital from San Francisco. I don't know what anybody's going to do with that information. Just to throw that out there. They are designed to be keepsake clothing, so it's supposed to be, like, my daughter's first clothing like pair of shoes, my son's like, you know, little shirt that he wore on the first day of school, that kind of stuff. So they're meant to be kept and preserved. They are focusing on welcoming every family, which I think is a nice little modern touch. And they are trying to like, I think, get more into the like celebrity baby situation. They just did some huge collab with Dwayne Wade and his family. They retail for $46 per onesie, That's which is ridiculous to me because if I were to go to a store and see something for $50, I don't know if I'd buy it for like my grown self. And they resale depending on like print and if it's like associated with like a specific holiday or like a specific event, those can do pretty good. About 15 to 30 bucks. And they're sold specifically at The Gap. Every now and again, they'll have like a little Nordstrom like pop up Janie and Jack situation. They pulled out of Macy's, which I think is funny. Okay. And I would love to hear that drama. But other than that, they're Janie and Jack stores. My next brand is definitely my favorite brand on this entire, entire That's list. So cute. I love this brand. I have loved this brand for a long time. I've seen it on the real 
reel a number of times and every time I see a print, it's just adorable. So I've known about this one for a while, but I have not had experience. So it is called Mini Rodini. So Mini Rodini is a Swedish children line and it was created in 2006. And right when it was created in their first like drop, they sold out almost immediately. Good. People really wanted it. Good for them. It is actually created by an illustrator, which is such a cool concept for like a creative director to a children's clothing line mm -hmm. is to be like a child's illustrator. Yeah. Her name is Cassandra Rodin. So I assume she wanted to just rhyme her last name with mini. So Rod maybe it's pronounced Rodini? Mini Rodini? It could be. I don't know. See, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not name. Swedish. I'm Norwegian. <laughs> I'm not Swedish. So I don't know. So this brand takes children seriously and their clothes <laughs> should match their interests and personalities, which I do agree with. That's funny. I think kids should kind of like pick out their own and like whatever they're drawn to. So yeah. their production is very ethical and very er environmentally friendly. And they have two mini Rodini actual like brick and mortar stores. And then they're sold at over 300 actual brick and mortar other stores around the world. Online, they're sold on Essence, My Teresa, Satire, and Barney's, along with, of course, all of those designer kids boutiques. The retail for a onesie is 60 to 80, and the resale is 15 to 50. Ooh, and like I said, $80. As, as you can see by these prints, this brand is just so... There's like three standout brands in this list. And this is one of them. I love Mini Rodini. Cute. My next one is one that I'd like kind of heard of, but not really. It is called Tea Collection. And they were founded in 2003 to start fostering global love between children, which I think is just beautiful. Very like, what's that little like scholastic book poster? Like all the kids and they're different colors. And they're like <laughs> standing, holding hands around the world, giving very that. Anyway, the name comes from the drink. So tea is a common like drink for each country. In the United States, we have like iced tea. China, they have like tea there's like different kinds of teas in all these countries so it's like the commonality hmm. which i think is really sweet they are very 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 focused on like philanthropic events. They do a ton for like child labor laws in third world countries. They do a ton for like, you know, child safety in countries that are kind of like up and developing. 10% of their profits goes back into like children's foster care or like schools or they'll like, you know, do That's job nice. training for like young women in countries where like women are oppressed and that kind of thing. It's great. <laughs> to date, they have done $500,000 for the little children's charities, which I think is super That's sweet. Really nice. Their prints are inspired by the outdoors and the places they travel. They're very focused on like globalization. So they go to all these different places is like look at all these different things like experience all these different cultures and their prints and little patterns reflect that their onesies so they have two specific ones they have a long leg and a short leg the long leg ones retail at 35 the short leg ones are 29 resale for the long legged ones are about 20 to 25 again depending on the print and then the short legged ones are about 15 to 20 which i think is pretty good for like a book yeah. My next brand is actually already another one of the ones that I really, really like on this list. And that is one that I have recently tried for the first time. It caught my attention in the bins because of the really cute prints. Little did I know that's what they're known for. <laughs> it's expensive. So this brand is called Winter Water Factory. And they are located in Brooklyn and they focus on screen printing textiles. So they make these Ooh. really intricate, really unique prints. And then they do these huge sheets of that print and cut out all these and little ones. And you make your stuff. design. I yeah. Love that. They focus on creative and interesting prints, like I just said, and they are created by Stephanie and Todd Linen which is awesome. The to linen. work in clothing and your last name's Linen. Linen. It's L it's, so it's L Y N E N, but still. Your name's Linen. And you can, like work with textiles. <laughs> oh. They're like, huh. Linen. Whenever uh -huh. they like have like a linen like thing come in yeah. the factory. That's funny. <laughs> All their pieces are 100% organic cotton that is made in the United States. And this I loved as well. So the name Winter Water Factory comes from her and her sister. So Stephanie, she actually mm -hmm. grew up in Germany. And her and her sister, during the winter, when there was snow, they would go put the snow into jars and bottles. They would let it melt, and they would sell it to their parents as winter water. I love that. Good for the little, like, so childhood cute. entrepreneurship. So, so cute. That is so fun. So... <laughs> <laughs> Their clothes are only sold at all these like funky baby specialty stores. They're not really at any department stores, but the retail for a onesie is $48 strictly. 
<laughs> and the resale <laughs> is 15 to 35. I think it depends on the print, the rarity, and how much people want them. If you don't know which ones I'm talking about, these were the onesies I found. One of them had a USPS printed oh, like so mail cute. print. Little mail truck I think that was there. a rarer one and oh. I probably could have got about 35 for it. I sold a bunch as a bundle, but still, I think it depends on like the print. So cute. My next one is definitely one that is in line with the brand we have all known and all come to love. It is Mini Bowden, which I don't know why I didn't know. It's from the UK. You didn't know Bowden's from the UK? No. Do you wonder why it always says the UK size first? No. I don't even, I don't think twice about it, to be completely honest. <laughs> um, so that was really fun to, okay. like, look at the images of the English countryside and the Bodens. So, the Bodens. the Bodens are actually, like, living, breathing human beings. It was found by Mr. Johnny Bowden way back Johnny in Johnny Bowden! Johnny Bowden! <laughs> which is such a, like, that's, that's such a an really American cool, like, name, though. That sounds that's like That's such, like, a Wild 60s. West. It reminds me, isn't, like, Johnny Rockets, like, a restaurant? Or Johnny Rockets is a restaurant. It's like Johnny Bowden. But like Johnny Bravo, 1990s cartoon yeah. character. Like Johnny's such a just like it's Johnny It's such Bowden. an American name. It's yeah. such an American That's name. Funny. He founded it in 1991, going strictly into menswear, which it's interesting because that is the only thing they don't do anymore. Um, He wanted nine pieces into his wardrobe that he couldn't find anywhere else. And at the time, the catalog was like becoming the premier way of shopping. And he was like, all these men's clothes, these catalogs are ugly. So I'm gonna make my own, put them in my own catalog. Men's stuff didn't do good. Miss wife Stephanie comes in and says we gotta change this nonsense and she made bold into what it is today which is wonderful <laughs> we gotta throw away that she's stuff. like that idea of putting the trash so she was the one that started like introducing these kind of like whimsical it's very english the more that i look at it which i don't really understand why i never put how you miss that <laughs> put two and two together but it's a little bit more reserved it's a little bit more kind of like tea and gardens and the queen and that kind of nonsense he is also like the biggest fan of his little jack russell terrier named sprout i just who found, says this is like creative muse remember yesterday at the consignment store <laughs> i saw a jack russell printed oh, yeah. bowden button up we should send it to bowden and be like here's here's your, here's your history and he's like i made that thank you so mini bowden and baby bowden are actually two separate things so there's regular Bowden, Mini Bowden, Baby Bowden. Regular Bowden was 1991. Mini Bowden was 1996. And it's kind of like each release kind of like follows the birth of one of his children. He has oh. three daughters. So like Mini Bowden was when his daughter was going to become a toddler. Put one and one together. Like obviously she's going to have homemade clothes. Second daughter was Mini Bowden. Third daughter was Baby Bowden in 2004. Hmm. And it has since flourished. Um, People love it. I didn't realize how expensive they were. The onesies are $56 a piece. Dang. Which, like, when the dresses are $90, $100. Yeah. I don't know about that. But, either way, they resell, again, Bowden, just, like, generally, depending on whatever kind of print it is, whatever kind of style, Google, whatever you have. But a lot of the baby stuff, like the Christmas, the Easter, think of those, like, traditional, like, English holidays, all that stuff is crazy good. So they resale for about 20 to 30 They're sold at Nordstrom, Bowden stores, and baby boutiques. Mm. And, like, the really expensive, like, English department store. And yeah, Mini Bowden right and Baby Bowden are nice because like regular Bowden, there are style numbers in them. So it's usually pretty easy to it's find information. It's literally the nicest thing in the world. My next brand is one of, if not the most expensive brand on my list. And <laughs> that would be Misha and Puff. Misha and Puff started in 2012 by Anna Wallach. And she was knitting her first cozy onesie because she just was like, I can't find one. So she was like, mm, I'm going to make one. I need. <laughs> <laughs> she has a love for making long lasting slow fashion, which we can all support slow fashion. It's kind of weird with mm -hmm. babies to say slow fashion because obviously like they grow really quick and they need to switch <laughs> out of it fast. But just natural rate of clothing <laughs> progression for a child is much faster than yeah. an adult. Though this brand does make woman's as well so maybe she's talking about that with her slow fashion stuff <laughs> her stuff is very high quality though and she has a focus on fair treatment and kindness towards animals and the earth which of course we also oh, can get behind yes. like i said she does also sell adult clothing strictly women's and most of it is knit or like sweaters or knit pants she has a lot of focus on like wools and stuff that stuff is pricey. The women's knits are very, very expensive. Her stuff is sold at also kind of strictly the designer baby stores and then her mm -hmm. own website. The retail for a Misha and Puff onesie is $40 to $130 and it honestly might even go up a little bit. And that is just for the onesies <laughs> oh since that's what we're talking about. But for an example, she also sells like baby zip up hoodie jackets. Those are like $300. 
So resale for Get the your coin girl. Resale for Not the, that much yarn for those little bodies. <laughs> resale for the onesies are about thirty to one hundred and fifty, so they can be rare Dang. and they keep their value very, very, very well. Same with the adult women stuff. That also keeps its value really well. Okay, so if you know. see Misha and Puff, anything. Grab it. Pick it up. My next one takes a page out of Miss Meacham Poof's book of very exorbitant resale values for what <laughs> it actually is. So we are going to be delving in very quickly to the Oshkosh Bagash overall delirium. This this is a this is loaded. Every time I think about this concept, it just blows my mind. So I did some research. I found like a psychological article from the Google. It's like Google Scholar. Like it has all the like academic stuff in it. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, there's an article that says like a lot of these older kids pieces are so expensive because it's the parent like buying the thing for the kid for the childhood that they never got. Either way. So we are only talking about the like overalls or the kind of like vintage children's clothing. Obviously, I know Oshkosh Bagash is still like a clothing store. If you find anything modern, it is probably not worth hardly anything compared to what they paid for it. The vintage stuff in particular is what we were talking about. So they are, where were they founded? Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 1895. I had to think about that for two minutes. I didn't write that down. But they started as like a men's jean company and then the women would cut up the men's jeans to make like little farmer boy overalls for like the kids when the jeans would wear out. This used to be a leg of your dad's jeans. Now it's your shirt. Well, that was kind of like the <laughs> testament to the character of the denim was like, you know, you can have them for so long. Like yeah. dad can have them. And well, then like, boy, I can have good them. recycling. So Mr. Oshkosh got a little greedy and his wife put a little bug in his ear and was like, you better cut these housewives off for making these jeans because you lose the money. And so he then started to make like the children's ones. My grandma actually had a pair of these back in 1940 in the Dust Bowl. She's getting whipped around Iowa in her Oshkosh Bagash overalls. Anyway. She's the, getting dust in her overalls. <laughs> and they're fine. The denim overalls in particular, the ones from the 90s backwards are very valuable. Um, the ones that are like the Primo are the made in the USA, the Union made, or kind of just like anything generally speaking about like vintage denim, like salvage, 1930s, high quality made in USA, Union made stuff is all going to do pretty good. The one thing that throws me for a loop every single time I Google it are like the floral printed 80s jumpers. They're not all denim. Some of them can be like cotton. They've been made in a terry. Um, there was like polyester ones for like holiday situations, but like anything floral, Google it. Like just if you're bored on a night, like have a glass of wine, open the eBay, Oshkosh by gosh, overall sold high to low. You will have like a field day. Yeah. It's, it's quite fun though. It is quite fun. It's crazy. Some of the value of some of those. Yeah. Like, it's, it's hard to say a resale. <laughs> retail, not that much because yeah. they were bought in the eighties. So like four bucks. It, Totally depends on the piece. Just hundred percent. Google it. Give it a Google. I've like kind of known that this has been a situation for a while. So when I mm -hmm. find vintage Oshkosh like overalls, I'll usually Google them or reverse image search them. Mm -hmm. And even the vintage ones I find usually come up as like nine bucks, like not worth anything. It yeah. is so strictly dependent on the piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you could have found a piece of gold or you could have found like a $10 bill. The other kind of like big hallmark for the which ones like are going to do really good versus which ones are kind of just like a little bit more common, like late 80s, early 2000s ones are the vest back. I looked it up and I think like they changed the way of how they like make the back of them now. I think they kind of like used to be a little bit more like structured and now I think they kind of have a little bit more like shoulder mm. room to them. Maybe, do not quote me, I'm not like a textile designer. But but that would be something to look out for. Yeah. I would say that is a... Do your due diligence. Research. Pick it up if you find it. Take a picture. You know. Yeah. And if that, like, you have a kid in your life, you can give it to. Yeah. Like, everybody Or knows. I'm sure, like, once upon a child would even... Everybody knows babies. You know? <laughs> So my next and last brand for this video is another one that I really do like a lot of the prints from, but this brand has like no information on their website. So I do not have a starting year for this brand and I do not know the people that started it either, but it is called Hugo Loves Tiki. They make all kinds of kids pieces like shirts, onesies girl, boy, all that kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of home, once again, that's like sheets for a crib or Aww. a little plushie or something Cute. like that. All of their pieces are US made organic and they really love color and maximalism. That's about the only information mm -hmm. they will share with you and it's on their Instagram bio 
or else they don't tell you anything about the brand. <laughs> Another very interesting, weird thing about this brand is they actually have like three lines. I believe Hugo Loves Tiki is like the mother company. The parent company. Mm -hmm. And then there's also Rami Loves Lulu. And there is Banana Valentine, which is such a like kids brand name. Banana oh, Valentine. they're all like children's. Yes. I thought it was going to be like yes. mom, dad. Baby. The Hugo Loves Tiki is their normal line. It's kind mm. of like the normal kids prints where it is like animated, but it's just like art. It's like illustrations and mm. it's kind of repetitive and colorful and whatever. Rami Loves Lulu is real life photography printed onto the same kind of pieces. So it's like a bowl of Lucky Charms. Oh, pretty. Or like Legos or Skittles. It's still oh. very kid centric, like things that relate to children, but it's pictures printed. Interesting. And then Banana Valentine is like super animated where it's almost like a cartoon, like everything has eyes. It's very, it's very like anamorphic type imagery to it and very, very cartoon, very like over the top. They're like that. really big, really oh. expressive. I love a maximalist baby. So the only other, other information I kind of came up with about this is a lot of their prints are objects and foods with eyes. So Perfect. if you see that in the bins, just check. Maybe it's it one shot. of these lines. Their pieces are sold at just the baby designer boutiques. The retail for a onesie is 30 to 75, so it is quite expensive. And the resale is 15 to 40, kind of like with all these brands, it just depends on the print. My next one is a little interesting. It was a little conceptual for like what I would assume to be a children's brand, but either way, it is called Weekend House Kids. I also could not find anywhere an explanation for this name. I have no idea what it means. I don't know who the kids are. I don't know what weekend it is. I don't know whose house we're going to. I don't know anything. But it was founded in Spain, which like, can you just imagine being like a child in Spain? No. Beautiful. Oh my God, it'd be amazing. <laughs> in 2018 by two sisters. Two sisters. And they sat down at their little Spanish kitchen table and were like, we don't have anything that's sustainable. Let's make our own. And they were like, okay. Literally like the conversation on the website is like, they both had this meeting at their kitchen table and they were like, I don't like my kids clothes. Do you? No, let's make our own brand. Okay, <laughs> done. And then they're like, and now we're here. So they kind of wanted this like very sustainable, but also like modern. They didn't want kids clothes that like looked like kids clothes. They wanted kids clothes that looked like the things that like mom found really trendy and like thought was really beautiful and really timeless. They also kind of have this like very heavy hand on like things that can like be regifted or reworn or like if you don't wear this anymore, like who can you give it to that has like a kid that's this size or like, do you have any neighbor kids that are this size? Like the hand-me-down is very upfront, which is funny because when I was a kid, I hated hand-me-downs mm -mm. and that's all that I wore. They are within walking distance to their factory. So they just stroll down there all the time in the Spanish Make countryside. Make morning coffee and just... Are you kidding me? I'd, take, I'd put on one of those like 50 little head scarves, like a picnic basket, grab a glass of wine and just meander myself down to the garment factory. <laughs> How wonderful would that be? So they're very focused on like sustainability. They have this like really amazing vertical integration of like how they're going to be sustainable. They're O2 certified. They have like all these checklists. They retail for about 40 bucks and they resale for about 30. And they're usually only sold at Essence and their own website. Which is Essence, cute. the baby category, they must be a lot bigger really than a lot of these like other Essence. stores. It's those young, hip parents. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but it just like, I didn't see much Farfetch. I didn't see much like Ukes. I didn't, I feel like mm -mm. Essence was no, the only like either. recognizable one that seemed to pop up a like few times. I feel a lot of these are European though. Yeah. I've had a couple that are like only in Spain. You've had a couple that are like only in wherever. Korea and Spain. Yeah. Yes. So those are all the baby ball that we have balls. for you guys today. Uh -huh. Though if you are a Valentine, we do have eight more just as fun, just as wacky, just as crazy printed baby ball for you guys tomorrow that we're excited to share with you guys. As so always. I hope you guys learned something today. I definitely did. Of mine, I only think I knew one or two of them. I knew one, two, three. Janie and Tech. And so, Winnie Bones, so too. So I've learned quite a bit from this as well. It's fun. Yeah, baby it's clothes are so cute. I have never really dabbled much into baby clothes, mm -hmm. literally up until I found that like water factory mm -hmm. one. So it'll be interesting to maybe keep my eye out a little bit more at the baby stuff. I've kind of been trying to lately. I think just Because like, there is some obviously worth money. So yeah. it's worth keeping your eye out. Well, and like our bins, like, there are people that, like, really go for the baby stuff, and then there's, like, most of them that do not. And I feel like the people that really do are, like, the people that, like, have, have kids that just, just like, cute need to just get a large amount of clothing in a short amount of time. You know, who am I gonna, to, like, take an extra 20 minutes and, like, stroll by the baby bin? 
mm -hmm. next time I see her because like you don't know. Anyway, anyways, that's all that we have for you guys today. Let us know if you've heard of any of these. Do you have experience with any of these? Did you learn anything? And we will see the Valentines tomorrow for eight more, and we will see everybody else on Thursday for a bins haul of the two of us. We are going in two days. So I'm wish us luck. We're going on actual Tuesday, the day that you're seeing this. Yes. So, so wish, the video will be up on Thursday. Wish us luck, and we will see you then. So it's going to be the time I find a Birkin? No. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Wow.